Hi again everyone. In this video I'm going to cover the fundamentals of constructing spheres and spherical forms. We will have a look at how to fully construct a sphere in stages, but let's have a look at what makes a sphere look like it's in perspective. So here you can see we have six spheres drawn from different perspective angles. The silhouette of the sphere of course is just a circle, but it's the contour lines that help communicate what perspective angle they're drawn from. The contour lines are based on three intersecting ellipses and you can see here me tracing off those ellipses. There's the first one, there's the second one, and here's the third one. And those ellipses are based on the intersection of three planes. So let's simplify this and just take a look at one sphere from one particular angle in order to understand how to construct these things. So here I have two spheres and these spheres are sitting on a horizontal surface. How do we know that they're sitting on a horizontal surface? Well, if we have a look at our ellipse lying horizontally, remember from our rule, the major axis is horizontal to our view that ellipse would be sitting in a square that is horizontal and our minor axis is straight up and down, vertical. This particular drawing is showing that we are slightly above the sphere because of how open that minor axis is. This sphere here is drawn closer to our eye level. And what's the rule? Well, the flatter the minor axis is, the closer it is to the horizon line. So we're still using the same principles that we've learnt about sketching ellipses in perspective. So let's take the perspective angle of this sphere and I'm going to use it to show you how to fully construct this sphere in stages using three intersecting planes. So here we have the redrawn sphere using colour coordinated contour lines and to the right this is the full construction of that sphere. You can see here I've drawn a very light estimated perspective cube and it's important to have your proportions correct, particularly of the square planes that we know that the ellipses are going to sit inside. The more accurate your ellipses are going to be, the more accurate the contour lines to indicate surface are going to be. Now I've left out the major and minor axes from this sketch just to keep it cleaner but take note of the major axes of this red ellipse and the minor axis is actually a line going to the left vanishing point. On this green ellipse the major axis is 90 degrees to the minor axis and that minor axis is going to the right vanishing point. Of course, our blue ellipse, which is a horizontal ellipse, its minor axis is vertical and major axis is horizontal and 90 degrees to that minor axis. And just to clarify that, here I'm just showing the three ellipses on their individual planes and I've indicated the major and minor axis of each of those ellipses. You can see that on the right vertical ellipse, which is this green one, the minor axis would be going to the vanishing point to the right, and on the left vertical plane, which is this red ellipse, its minor axis would be going to the left vanishing point. And of course the horizontal ellipse, which is this blue one, we have the center line, which is vertical, that's your minor axis, 90 degrees to that would be your major axis. The view up here is the same construction but without the full construction of the cube and you can see that we've got the three intersecting planes and the ellipses that sit on those planes we're going to use this view to help us construct radius corners so let's have a closer look at that firstly let's have a look at a cube that has radius corners and you can see this cube here which started off with sharp edges and sharp corners has actually been rounded off with radius corners. Each of these images here are actually part of the construction of a sphere. So this bottom corner here 
bottom left corner, top left corner, front corner, top right corner, and bottom right corner. This sketch doesn't show the construction of the far side top corner, but in fact if we joined all of these corners together, we would actually make up a sphere. The outer images shown here are basically each of these corners without the full construction. So in, in heavier line weight, that would be the object as a solid or the corner as a solid. And of course, light line work to show the internal construction of that edge. That would be the front corner and of course, the far side right corner. And again, the bottom left corner, the bottom leading corner, and the bottom right corner, drawn without all of its construction. So let's see how to construct each of these corners by using our earlier image showing the intersecting planes and ellipses. Okay, so here you can see I've digitally replicated the construction of a sphere using the construction with the three planes and the ellipses. And from this, I'll show you how to construct uh, the radius corners on the top surface of this sphere. You can see there are four quarters or four quadrants on the top surface above that horizontal plane. And each of those corners are actually little cubes. And we can take the top left corner to construct this radius corner. Basically, I'm just going to define the surface that we would see. There's the leading radius, that part of the ellipse. We'll also have that part of the horizontal ellipse. This part of the green ellipse on the right vertical side and the radius of the circle. To construct the far side radius corner, we would take the far side cube, define the leading edge, define the base edge or the baseline edge, trace off the sections of the ellipses on the left vertical face, on the right vertical face and of course the circle. Here we have the top right radius corner and it's basically the flip side of the top left radius corner. Again we trace off the vertical edge, horizontal edge, that part of the right vertical ellipse this part of the left vertical ellipse, it will tangent the radius of the circle. Part of the horizontal ellipse, and of course, that should tangent smoothly to the perimeter of the circle itself, or the sphere itself. And the last of the four radius corners on this top surface would be the forward facing radius corner. And you can see we're taking this section of the horizontal ellipse, that section of the left vertical side ellipse, and this section of the right vertical side ellipse. And that's it. If I wanted to show the inside construction of each of these radius corners, of course you can come in with lighter line weight and define these construction lines. So that's if we want to show all the internal construction. I'm using a finer point fine liner to do this. And obviously these aren't shown on the images on the top row here. Okay, so let's now have a look at constructing the radius corners on the bottom surface of this sphere. Again, we'll still have four quadrants, four little cubes, and we trace off the edges and parts of the radius of these ellipses to construct our corner. So with the bottom left radius corner, I'm tracing off that horizontal and vertical line. 
gives, gives me a sharp edge and corner. Then of course I'm going to trace off this section of the horizontal ellipse, this part of the left vertical ellipse, and here's the tangent which would be the outline or the perimeter of the circle. The far side lower radius corner which would be the box at the back of this lower surface, we would see a leading corner and then I would have this section of the yellow ellipse which is that left vertical ellipse, this section of the right vertical ellipse and of course that section of the horizontal ellipse. Moving along to the right side lower radius corner I'm tracing off again an edge that I can see. Oops, a little bit wonky. And then I would see that this section of the top ellipse, this section of the right vertical ellipse, which is the green one, and of course the perimeter of the actual sphere itself. And to finish off, here's the near side lower radius corner. Again, we'll see the top edge of that surface. This would be the leading edge, which is this section of the horizontal ellipse, the blue one. This is a compound curve here, so it's this section of the right vertical ellipse, the orange ellipse. This section of the left vertical ellipse ellipse which is the green one and of course we're going to finish off with the perimeter or the limit of the sphere which would tangent all of that. Again these corners are drawn as solid objects but if I wanted to include the internal construction just going back to these original trace offs I would see this inside edge I wouldn't see anything more than that for that far side radius corner. I would see or include this edge, which is the far side edge of that ellipse. And here I would see a combination of the far side vertical line and this part of the left or orange ellipse and this part of the right vertical or green ellipse. So that would be the construction line uh, internal wireframe of each of those corners. Okay, so other than radius corners, I wanted to show you that we can build sphere based forms by still using the same construction and you can see quite a few of them on this page. You can see I've done the same as previously in that I'm just using heavier line weight to define the form that I want based on the construction of a sphere and above the full construction is the actual object itself and I've chosen to include the contour lines and center lines and you can see how by including those it clearly defines the shape of the actual surface of this hemisphere. So similar to drawing boxes and cylinders and cones in isolation until you get used to drawing them accurately and in perspective, I'd strongly suggest drawing spheres and spherical type forms in isolation just like this. Then later on you can apply what you've learnt from drawing these things and adding them to your complex geoform constructions. And I'd like to see you attempt that and include some of these features in those sketches. When you add these forms to your complex structures, just think about the fact that each of these ellipses sit inside squares. So if you can map a square on the surface of your structure, you can actually construct the ellipse. For example, this hemisphere, we know that the ellipse is 
horizontal, that ellipse sits inside a square. And if you can map that square on the surface of your complex structure, you can start to build this hemisphere. If you wanted to do a half a, a sphere on the side of a vertical wall, if you can map that square in perspective on your vertical wall, you can map that ellipse and then you can map the rest of this structure so that you can build all the construction. So what we've covered in this video is essentially fundamentals of spherical and spherical form construction. Remember, these are fundamentals. And as long as we understand those fundamentals, we can apply those to the construction of freehand sketches. And that way we can draw these types of features with some accuracy.